There was horrible traffic this morning. So you're all shaking your heads. Uh, there's not much I can do about it, except to commend uh, the Sheriff's Department for doing an excellent job and commending you for, for being on time uh, despite the traffic situation. So thanks to everybody, and we're going to resume. Mr. Walgren, Ms. Brazil, you may proceed. Thank you, Ron. People would call Alberto Alvarez to the stand. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court, the whole truth and nothing but the truth will help you God? Yes, ma'am. Please be seated. Thank you. Morning. Please state your name for the record. Spell Albert your first and last names. Alberto Alvarez, A L B E R T O. Alvarez, A L V A R E Z. Mr. Alvarez, good morning. Good morning, sir. Let me provide you with some instructions. Uh, these are instructions I actually give to every witness in every case. The first is, please sit back and relax. Thank you, sir. The second, please speak loudly so we can hear you. Sure. The third, if you're called upon to provide a yes or no answer, reply by yes or no rather than slang uh-huh or uh-uh, which can be a little tricky. And lastly, please wait until you hear an entire question before you even start to answer it. In our daily lives, many of us are used to speaking over each other. But it's important in a courtroom that we hear only one person speaking at one time. So wait. Is that okay? I understand, sir. Thank you. Okay. Direct, Mr. Walton. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Alvarez, directing your attention to the month of June 2009, uh, where did you work at that time? Uh, I worked uh, at 100 North Carrollwood, sir. And who lived at 100 North Carrollwood in Los Angeles County? Uh, Michael Jackson, sir. And with whom uh, did he live at that location? He lived there with his children. And what was your uh, job at that time? Um, I was a uh, director of logistics, sir. What does that mean? Um, uh, basically what I would do, uh, route surveys, hotel surveys, establish communication with PD, um, uh, establish communication with upper management at any venue that he would uh, uh, be arranged to come into. Okay. And when you say, it, I think you said advanced sur or hotel surveys, route surveys, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I was part of the advanced team. Um, and uh, what I would do is I'd make sure everything was, uh, was, uh, was clear or, or in its proper place before he... And entered. when you say he, are you referring to Michael Jackson? Yes, sir. Okay. And just to, to give us an idea of what you did with more specificity, let's say uh, Michael Jackson indicated to you that he wanted to go uh, shopping. What would you do uh, in that circumstance? He would usually, he would usually give me uh, instructions as to what he wanted to buy or what he wanted to go shopping for. And uh, he would uh, uh, ask me to go look for certain stores. Um, and so what I would do is I would go around the areas and look for the stores that had um, the items that he would look for and then come back with the information and if he would, uh, he would ask me if everything was clear I would say yes and so he would agree to come out and, uh, and go shopping. Okay and then when he would then say okay I'm going to go shopping would you be in an advanced vehicle to uh, or would you go with him at that point? Uh, uh, for shopping sir I would actually uh, be the passenger of the vehicle he would be uh, traveling in. Okay. Now, in June of 2009, for how long had you, uh, at that point in time, how long had you worked for Michael Jackson? Well, I got called back. Um, uh, I, I've worked with him since 2004, on and off. Um, but uh, at that point, I, I, I was called back, I believe it was December 31st through, or uh, January 1st, sir. Of December, of two, uh, oh, December 31st of 2008 or, or January of 2009? Correct, sir. Okay. And when you were called back uh, into employment, did you agree to come back? Yes, sir. Okay. And was this a good job for you? Oh, yes, sir, it was. Okay. Did you make a good salary? Yes. 
And when you were called back into employment at that time, at that time was Michael living at 100 North Carrollwood? That's correct, sir. Okay. And beginning then, let's say in the beginning of January 2009, was it full-time employment for you? That's correct, sir. And that continued through, uh, through to uh, June 25th, 2009? Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, as a member of the security team, can you describe for me the basic uh, kind of rules and procedures as, as far as the property was concerned? Uh, let me ask you first, uh, was security generally uh, outside the residence? That's correct, sir. We had a security, a security trailer right uh, on the side of his house. Okay. And did security routinely go inside the house? Uh, no, sir. Only when we were requested inside. Okay. And the trailer that you referred to... Showing you first people's uh, six for identification. Can you see the trailer in that photograph? Yes, sir, I can. And, sir, can you grab that the pointer that you have up there? Okay. And can you point out the uh, sure. trailer, please? Right there. Okay, and for the record, indicating to the right of the uh, front portion of the house in people's six. And I want to show you one other photograph reflected in people's nine. Is this uh, more of a close-up view of that same trailer? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> now, was there a distinction between um, kind of on-site property security, people such as yourself that would actually go out uh, into the city with Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir, that's correct. We had, uh, um, uh, like you said, property security. And then uh, we were his uh, uh, personal security, sir. When you say we were his personal security, who's we? Uh, it was uh, Fahim Muhammad, uh, 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 Michael Amir, uh, myself, and then closer to, uh, to his passing, uh, uh, we had uh, Derek Muhammad and a few, uh, Isaac Muhammad okay. and Eric. Now, do you, uh, do you know Conrad Murray? Yes, I do, sir. Do you see him in court here today? Yes, sir. Could you identify him, please? Uh, yes, sir. He's sitting right over there with a blue suit and a great tie. Pointing to and identifying Dr. Murray, the defendant. Thank you. Mr. Alvarez, when did you personally first uh, see Conrad Murray? Um, once I started working at uh, North, uh, 100 North Carrollwood, um, I, I met, uh, I seen him um, uh, after January of 2009, sir. Okay. And when you first saw Conrad Murray, was it at the Carrollwood location? That is correct, sir. Now, going forward then to the months of, let's say, uh, April, May, and June of 2009, with what, what frequency would you see Conrad Murray at the Carrollwood residence? Um, in those months, uh, we started, uh, I started seeing him about five to six times a week, sir. And what time of day or night would you see him? Um, sometimes I would see him in the morning when I would come in, but for the most part I would see him in the afternoon. Okay. And were you aware that he was actually staying the night during that period of time? Yes, sir. Were you aware of oxygen tanks being on the premises? Yes, sir. Okay. And would those be stored in the security trailer from time to time? That is correct. Showing you what was earlier marked. People's 16 for identification. Do you recognize that photograph, sir? Yes, sir. That's the inside of the trailer. Okay. And do you see the uh, various oxygen tanks both to the left and right of this uh, broken chair in People's 16? Yes, sir. Okay. And is that an accurate depiction of uh, what would be normal to see in that trailer as far as the oxygen tanks? Yes, sir. Showing you people 17. This sign that reads, please remember to take the oxygen tanks every Friday. This place opens. Do you recognize that sign? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you know who put that sign up there? I do not, sir. Were you in charge in any way with um, maintaining the inventory of oxygen tanks or returning them or anything of that nature? Uh, no, sir. That was mostly uh, 
uh, house security that okay. would deal with that. Would you see Conrad Murray in possession of these oxygen tanks, either bringing them down or bringing them up from time uh, to time? From time to time, yes, sir. Uh, he would come into the, uh, the trailer, um, leave empty ones, and then he would grab some uh, full ones, sir. Mr. Alvarez, I want to take you forward then uh, to the evening of June 24, 2009, the night before Michael Jackson's death. Uh, were you working at Carrollwood on that day? Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay. And were you part of the advance team that took uh, Mr. Jackson to the Staples Center that evening? I was. Do you recall what time you went to the Staples Center that night? It was after 5 p.m., sir. And were you working uh, the advanced details you described to us earlier? Yes, I was. Okay. So describe for me what you did uh, sometime <coughs> after 5 p.m. as far as your responsibilities as part of the advanced team. Well, I would uh, drive, to, at that time we were at the Staples venue, and um, I would drive over uh, to, to Staples and um, uh, go under, underneath the Staples Center, uh, park my vehicle, and then I would walk over to uh, uh, Mr. Jackson's uh, uh, green room. Um, I'm sorry, his green room? Yes, sir. That's uh, a term they use for, uh, for his, um, you know, his dressing quarters or whatnot. Okay. Um, then uh, um, I would make sure that everything that he, he is accustomed to uh, was in place. Uh, he liked his uh, room at a certain temperature, so I would make sure that, you know, uh, stuff like that were, were taken care of. What temperature did he like his room at? Uh, you know, he liked a, a, a warm, warm up. And once you made sure everything was in order in his green room, what would you do as far as uh, venue security or anything of that well, nature? Well, we would do a walkthrough, uh, make sure that there was no uh, paparazzi or media that was not supposed to be in the venue, um, check in with, uh, with uh, staple security, um, check their surveillance, make sure everything was in, in order, and you know, just to ensure that uh, the, the arrival would go as smooth as possible. Okay. Now, once you... Uh, Check the green room, check security at the venue. Uh, did Michael uh, Jackson arrive sometime thereafter? Yes, sir. Uh, about what time did he arrive on June 24th? Uh, it would be hard for me to recall, but I believe it was uh, sometime like uh, 7, 6.30 to 7, somewhere around that time. And did you meet Mr. Jackson in the golf cart? That is correct, sir. Okay. And what did you do at that time? Um, he would exit his, uh, his uh, vehicle um, and... Um, he would, uh, I would, he would jump uh, onto the golf cart, and then I would just drive him over to his uh, his green room, and uh, he'd get off and prepare for rehearsal. Okay. And do you recall uh, the kind of demeanor or general attitude of Michael that evening? Uh, he was uh, very happy. Uh, I, I do recall he was in very good spirits. So once you then took him to his green room uh, and dropped him off, uh, what did you do? Um, we would, I would park the, uh, the golf cart on a, on a, in a position where it would be ready to go if he just wanted to leave. Um, and then we would um, uh, either start setting the parameters uh, for security inside the rehearsal area. Um, and, you know, we, would we, had a, we had our own break room and uh, the break room as, as needed. Okay. Now, during that rehearsal that evening, what did you do? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? During the actual rehearsal, uh, so you've, you've uh, gotten Michael safely into his green room, mm -hmm. uh, you turned the golf court cart around, uh, you indicated you guys had your own break room or, or sitting area for security. Right. So once you had dropped Michael Jackson off into his green room, uh, what did you do that particular evening? Oh, okay, um, well, uh, at that particular day, um, I, had, uh, I was in charge of the, uh, uh, the parameter in the back of the stage, um, and so I was posted in the back of the stage um, while he was rehearsing. Okay. And from being back in uh, the back of the stage, uh, exactly where were you, if you recall? I mean, when you say the back of the stage, what do you mean? Well, there was a, in the stage, and um, there there is a like a, a garage door that would open up to the stage, um, and uh, he would exit through there. And so I was in the back, back of the stage uh, position just in case anything or he needed anything, I would be there to, to uh, assist him. Okay. And so that, this uh, 
kind of what you described as a garage door, this would be, this would open up and the mic would come out onto the stage and you would also exit that way? That is correct. Okay. Were you able to see any of the rehearsal or was your view uh, blocked? It was blocked for the most part, but there was times where he was uh, singing certain songs that I would uh, go around the stage and just peek to see uh, his performance. Okay, and how would you characterize uh, his performance that evening as far as his, his demeanor? Well, he was doing very well um, uh, for the most part. And uh, um, he, uh, I, I mean, I remember the, the dancer saying, um, oh, Mr. Jackson. Just a moment. The objection is sustained. That's the yeah. answer. Everything thereafter is stricken. Disregard okay. the remainder. Yes, sir. Well, but the, the aspects of the show that you personally saw, not what the dancers told you, but the aspects you saw, it went very well? Yes, sir. Okay. And at the conclusion of the rehearsal that evening, uh, what took place? Um, well, after, after rehearsal, um, we did our same routine. Uh, once he was ready, uh, uh, once we loaded him up into the vehicle, um, I would then uh, um, jump into the advanced vehicle and uh, um, um, uh, drive out and secure the proper uh, route for, for, for the principal vehicle. Okay, that's what you did that night? That is correct. Okay. Now, were you, were you the one that actually then um, took Michael in the golf cart then to the subterranean area where he could get into the vehicles? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, was his demeanor uh, the same as you described earlier, as happy and uh, yes. in good spirits? Yes, sir. Now, once you got uh, Mr. Jackson safely to uh, the vehicle, uh, did you, the advance team, proceed uh, and leave the uh, location prior to Michael's departure? Yes, sir. Okay. And again, was that part of your route survey and advanced security? That is correct. Okay. And to where did you drive at that time? Um, if I recall correctly, sir, we uh, drove off to uh, uh, the 101 freeway and um, um, uh, I don't recall the exact exit, but I believe it would have been, uh, it could have been sunset. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there, w there was um, a, 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 a closure in the freeway. So I was able to uh, uh, catch that and know, uh, give the, the principal's vehicle uh, that information. And, and for that, you know, they didn't have to wait in, in traffic and they took an alter alternate route. Okay. And you proceeded to Michael's house at 100 North Carolina? Yes, sir. Okay. You arrived there before Michael? Yes, I did. And when you arrived at the location, uh, did you see a particular vehicle already parked at the house that you recognized? Uh, yes, sir, I did. And whose vehicle was that? Uh, that was Dr. Conrad Murray, sir. Showing you what was earlier marked, People's 10 for identification. Uh, is that Conrad Murray's uh, convertible BMW parked in the driveway as you saw it that night on uh, June 24, 2009? That's correct, sir.